through it. I just don't think I can think of a, of a situation where there's more more pure test of, of mental toughness. Literally every single day you live with your injury and you have to fight every single for every single movement you get. Um, you have to fight. Um, and you have to keep using every single bit of movement you get back, otherwise you lose it. So I can't really think of a, a more pure test of human character than, than being in this situation. You have days, I mean, you have some dark to- you know, dark moments. I mean, that's, th- that's life. I mean, you have some times where you sit there and think, you know, like it's surreal. You sit there and you're like, almost sort of with a right smile on your face, like how the hell did I get myself in this situation? And that's... That happens a lot, you know, on a day-to-day basis. You're sitting there and you're dropping food all over yourself or you can't even, you know, catch a ball, which you used to be able to do with your eyes shut. I mean, you know, you sit there and you think, what, you know, where have we got? How did we get here? I mean, why why are we here? But, you know, that's the challenge. Like, how you respond to that is, is the challenge. All right, here we go again, guys. I do an hour on this every day, as much as I can do, and then every week I just try and move up a gear and try and do a bit more. I remember that after about a month of being like this, I had my first dream when I wasn't walking. And I remember waking up in the middle of the night being so upset that my, my body had let me think that you know, I might be a paraplegic, for instance. But ever since then, I've only ever had able-bodied dreams, so I still have dreams of me running around, playing golf, you know, spending time with my family and loved ones. Um, And thank God I've never had that dream again, because it was the one and only time, it was absolutely horrible. Um, But no, I dream as an able-bodied person, which is good. A lot of people, when they first hear puffin magic, they think is puffin, you know, some sort of, someone smoking something or something. Peter Puffin is basically the first live puffin that I ever met, or for that matter, caught with uh, with Brad Wheaton back in that in that amazing day where we went to the Westman Islands in off the coast of Iceland. And literally, just as we were leaving the island, there was this little cheep cheep, and Brad effectively ran across and caught with his bare hands you know, a real live puffin um, and ever since ever since that day we've had a you know we had an affiliation with they're effectively just pu- penguins that can fly <laughs> um, but they're very very cute and um, and from that day we all, we both bought effectively little hand puppets like this like Peter here This little tail's got like a little tongue sort of thing. Unbelievable. <laughs> Did anyone notice that he's only got one leg? Gribble, he's got one leg. Is that what we could catch him? No, he's probably not flying with the leg. Well, that's just ruined, hasn't it? Peg leg Pete has been in court of the season, but as a tradition, we're going to let him go. And our little peg legged friend, oh, no, let him go. Okay, let him fly, fly away. Okay, you ready? Good. And, um, and we promised that with all our, all our world travelling, that we'd we try and get Peter the Puffin into as many amazing locations around the world as we could. And that's effectively what's happened. You know, Peter's become famous. Peter's going global, shall we say. Ago, my, my hip flexors started you know, coming into play, which is hopefully going to make it a lot easier for me to start taking some of those first steps. We're only just at the tip of the iceberg on where we've got to go. I mean, 
the journey has started and we're doing okay. But you know, to get you know, to get some of the goals we want, I mean, we're a very, very long way away. Um, you know, to rebuild a body, or as I like to you know, rebuild a masterpiece, takes a bit of time, unfortunately. I remember it so well. The very first person I saw when I woke up from my operation was my anaesthetist, because they're obviously looking looking after you through the operation. And I made a joke about riding a bike again, and she just laughed and said, you know, you're never going to ride a bike again. And I still remember how much that hurt, hurt me and how much I just wanted to get up and, and show her one day that I will, you know, I'll do my best to ride a bike and walk, etc. And I didn't say anything at the time, but even after five weeks in, in South Africa, when I'd started sort of wiggling my legs a little bit and moving some arms, that same nurse, um, sorry, the same anaesthetist came in and she'd come in to a credit every day to see me. Um, and she said to me, she said, you know what, maybe, maybe you will have, maybe you will work and walk again. But I gotta say, you know, having, you know, the people around me, like such a supportive friends and family, you know, all the support from you know, the Puff and Magic Foundation, all the people, um, you know, friends and family around the world who've, you know, with the text messages, you know, and his, all, all the communication from day one, every, people don't think it helps, but literally every email, every phone call, every prayer, it helps. You know, it helps you stay positive and helps you get better. I will try.